Welcome back to D20 Tactics. On this channel, I play Dungeons and Dragons with my friends, and we explore combat scenarios and play out the tactics used to defeat monsters quickly and safely, giving you more time to get back to roleplaying. I'm your host and Dungeon Master, Sarson Zero, and today I'm joined by Azure Wolf, Kron, Blind Oracle, and Fear No Equal. Together, we'll run through typical battles that adventurers might see playing Dungeons and Dragons. This is the second encounter in the Vampire Count's Castle, so if you missed the start, you can find a link to it in the description below. Grab your dice, draw your sword, and let's jump into combat. Hit points, abilities, spells, items in hand. I'm playing the Cleric. I still have 155 out of 155 hit points. I have both of my channel divinities. I have three level 1 spell slots, three level two spell slots, two level three spell slots, three level four spell slots, two level five spell slots, one level seven spell slot, and one level eight spell slot. I have a warhammer and a plus two shield in hand. Fear no equal as the fighter has 206 of 206 HP. We have our great axe plus two in hand, and we have two indomitables and one second wind available. Action surge has been used to great effect. We also have winged boots on our feet. 150 out of 150 HP, holding a plus two short bow using plus one arrows, instrument of the bard slung across my back. 118 out of 118, I have all seven charges on both the magic missile wand and the wand of lightning bolt, wand of war mage in the hand, four first level slots, three second level slots, three third level slots, three fourth level slots, two fifth level slots, one sixth level slot, and one eighth level slot, and arcane recovery is still available. Monsters, abilities, items, and numbers. This encounter has a single vampire deviant, which is like a regular vampire, but you know, different, and three flame skulls. Vampires have a couple of abilities. They have a shape changer ability. As we've found in the past, most shape changer abilities are garbage. This one is especially garbage. Here's a note that I want to read to you. The vampire can use its action to polymorph into a tiny bat or a medium cloud of mist or back into its true form. Again, this is an action. While in mist form, the vampire can't take any actions. So if you turn into mist, you can't turn back. They have a legendary resistance, which hopefully I'll be smart enough to use this time. They regenerate 20 hit points as long as they are not in sunlight or in running water or if they took radiant damage or damage from holy water. They can spider climb up ceilings and walls without making checks, though they do not have a climb speed. They do take 20 radiant damage when they start their turn in sunlight, and they have disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks. That might be relevant. They have multi-attack for their unarmed strike and their bite. They can charm as an action. They can summon children of the night as a once per day ability. They also have legendary actions to move, unarmed strike, or bite people. This encounter also has three flame skulls. Flame skulls can cast spells like magic missile, flaming sphere, or fireball, as one might expect. They also have a fire ray that can fall back on. They have magic resistance and resistance to lightning, necrotic, piercing, immunity to cold, fire, and poison, as well as charm, frightened, paralysis, poisoned, and prone. Passive perception of 12, making them out of the range of a sneaking rogue. And the vampire has passive perception of 17, active perception with a maximum of 27. Potentially, they could spot you. Okay, so we are ruling for that. Until that one dies, at least. Any questions about the vampire? Specifically, sunlight, correct? They don't have vulnerability to just any kind of light? Correct. They're resistant to necrotic and non-magical weapon attacks, but they do not have vulnerability to specifically radiant damage. The terrain and effects. You are in an indoor space. These bars can be opened like doors. They are not currently locked. You can pass through them using an object interaction to do so. Same thing with the doors back here. That's what the terrain looks like. Door is currently closed. Everyone is aware of everyone else. Tactics. What are the thoughts about tactics in this? Well, I do have two spell scrolls of protection from energy. That seems like a potential good cast because of three sources of fireball in the vicinity. Yeah, do we have some way to produce radiant damage? Because I don't think we have... Yes. I have several ways. I have five holy waters and just general spell casting that produces radiant. I can literally make a sunbeam. Do we want to go after the skulls first or the vampire first? Because if we go after the skulls, the vampire doesn't regenerate until we start putting damage on it. Is this one of those we want to use the globe or no? That is a good idea, I think, yeah. I think that's a great use of that tool right now. Globe of invulnerability on the vamp to keep it from doing anything. That does sound like a good idea. No, it's cast on us. Oh, sorry. It'll take care of that fireball. Yeah, the action economy tells me that we do want to take down the skulls first since they're likely to have a lower HP. Makes plenty of sense to me. Do it right here or go out in the room a little bit. It's going to come down to initiative, really, I think, for that part. Yeah. In that case, let's roll some initiative. Anybody have higher than a 20? 21 on a wizard. 20 on the vampire. Anyone have between a 20 and a 15? Anyone have between a 15 and a 10? 11 on the cleric. 10 on the rogue. 
Anyone have between a 10 and a 5? 7 on the fighter. What do you got for me, Al? 3. Adrian Wolf, you're up first. Step into the room with three spaces and cast Globe of Invulnerability. Any spell of fifth level or lower cast from outside the barrier can't affect creatures or objects within it by command for the Simulacrum. Call dodge. At the end of your turn, the vampire is going to take a legendary action. The vampire can move up to its speed. Now it's the Simulacrum's turn. So he's going to call dodge. Then the vampire is going to use another legendary action. Now it's the vampire's turn. Vampire's going to walk into here. Vampire's going to do an unarmed strike against you. 17 to hit. Put a pop shield because it's worth it. Then we're going to do a second attack. Same target. 16. That's probably not going to make it. No. That's my vampire. Three of these guys. They're going to sit where they're at. They're each going to ready a fire ray as a ranged spell attack to throw at you. So they're going to concentrate on that. They're going to attack one of you when you get into a position they can hit you. After that, we're going to go to the Kron. I'll go ahead and move up into melee range with the vampire above the wizard. Make a swing with my Warhammer. It's going to be a total of 25 to hit. Hits. It's a total of 4 damage. Now that's 9 total radiant damage. 4 is going to be cut in half because it resists non-magical weapon attacks. So that'll be 11 total. That will prevent it from regenerating at the start of its next turn. After the Kron, we're going to go to the Vampire. We're going to unarm strike again. 21 to hit you, wizard. After that, we're going to go to the Blind Oracle. Bonus action stealth. Have to roll. I get a 25. Sounds good. South one, shoot with the short bow into the vampire. The old standard play pattern does a 27 hit. 27 hits. Seven sneak dice? Okay, party time. You should have eight sneak dice. Eight sneak dice, thank you. I'm sure that extra d6 will save it. It was a really weak roll and into another weak roll, so 37 points of damage. And this is magical piercing, so it's going to take all 37 of it. Yep. And then we are going to move back. After the blind oracle, we're going to throw another vampire attack. Vampire's going to go after the wizard again. 25 to hit your wizard. That's a hit. Instead of dealing damage, the vampire can grapple the target with an escape DC of 18. So that's what it's going to do. After the blind oracle is the fear. Move out to the east side of the wizard. And we're just going to start wailing on this vampire. Attack number one. That's a 27 to hit for 17 damage. Attack number two. That's a... 25 to hit for reroll. 15 damage. Attack number 3. 25 to hit for 14 damage. And that will do for us. At the end of your turn, the vampire is going to move. Does that provoke an attack of opportunity? The legendary action specifically says the vampire moves up to its speed without provoking an opportunity attack. Flame skulls can hit. It's going to be the wizard they're going to shoot. Beautiful. I got a 7, a 9, and a 9, all of which will miss. After the fear, we're going to go to the owl. Move a man. Advantage for the rogue. And then back behind the cleric? Yep. After the owl, I'm out of legendary action, so it's then going to be the age of wolf. Okay, we're going to burn through three charges. On the Wanda Magic Missile? Yes. That is a four on the dice. Four plus one is five, plus five is ten, times five is fifty. That's exactly how many hit points the vampire has left. It turns to mist and disappears. Moving back in the globe. <laughs> What's the instruction for the simulacrum? He's going to move into the globe and dodge again. Right behind me, please. After the Azure Wolf is the vampire. Vampire allies, they're going to all cast spells and ready actions. Nobody wants to counter spell, so the spell they're going to ready is Magic Missile to shoot at whoever comes out of the globe first. After that, we're going to go to the Kron. Sacred Flame, so DC 18. DC 18, they have magic resistance against this. 14 plus 3 is not going to do it. Hits. Total of 13. Concentration save for the West guy. He will pass with a 18. After the Kron is the Blind Oracle. These are hard corners, correct? Yes. Can't end in the cleric space, correct? Correct. Cannot end in the cleric space. You can end in the owl space. All right, so go ahead and move me into the owls. Bonus action hide. We're going to shoot at the skull on the far side. Well, there's the crit. Oh, boy. One moment, please. Now I have a Warhammer's worth of d6. 18 d6. Less impressive than you'd think. I mean, the number, the, the final number is less impressive. 69 points of damage. They do have damage resistance to piercing. He takes 38 points of damage. Does it need to make a con save for the magic missile? Oh, it does. This is going to be a DC 19. Fails, so this guy loses his spell. Fear, you're up. Probably fine without me going out there and triggering them, so I'm just going to stay here and dodge. After that, we're going to go to the owl. He's going to dodge. After the owl is the Azure Wolf. Azure Wolf is actually going to step out there for a very specific reason. <laughs> 
Just right outside the globe. That's where I want to go. Magic missile goes off. Yep. A shield of Brute <laughs> just negates it. <laughs> <laughs> Brute is shielding coming in clutch for the first time ever. <laughs> While I'm here, let's magic missile him. <laughs> one charge expended. That's a one on the die on the one on the far left, please. One plus one is two. Two plus five is seven. Seven times three is 21. This guy's going to take 21 points of damage. And move back in. That was hilarious. After that, we're going to go to the simulacrum. What do you order the simulacrum to do? He's going to step out and he's going to expend a second level spell slot to try to kill that one on the far left. Guys is three, please. Three plus one is four. Four plus five is nine. Nine times four is 36. It drops. One square back? Yep. After the Age of Wolf is the vampire and vampire allies. They don't have much they can do. This one's going to cast a spell. Simulacrum will hit the one on the right with counterspell. Guy in the middle cell is going to cast a spell. You're going to counterspell it? Yep. Both of them. That's me, and then we're going to go to the Kron. I have it, so I want to use it. I'm going to go ahead and use my bag of tricks, move 25 feet to the closest one, and then I'm going to throw a jackal appears, order it to attack. That is a definite miss. That is a six total. Well, that was fun. That was the Kron blind oracle. Bonus action hide. We're going to try and shoot the easternmost one again. 20 to hit. 20 will hit. Perfect for 30 points of damage. 30 is reduced to 15 as it resists piercing damage, and 15 is lethal. After the blind oracles, the fear no equal. Advance directly towards it, and then dodge. After the fear no equal is the owl. I'm gonna move him in, give advantage for the rogue. Yeah, the door is closed, and the owl doesn't have the hands to open it. Yeah, the reason that the jackal was able to get in there is because it was a little ball of fur before it appeared. Just dodge. Just dodge, okay. Age wolf. More magic missiles. Two more charges. He's going to throw up a shield and take no damage from that. Burn up his reaction. The simulacrum. Dodge. To the Azure Wolf is the vampire's allies. He's going to throw a fireball in a place that hits all of you guys. So let's counter that. Who's doing that? Simulacrum. No reason to proc an opportunity attack, although we can hide behind the jackals. Give us a little bit of cover. After that is the Kron. I'm going to move the jackal out of the way. Uh, the jackal's going to go ahead and attack. <laughs> no, my cover. <laughs> <laughs> I would just like it noted. Any other animal on that list would have been better. That's a seven on the die this time. The jackal misses. So I'm just going to go ahead and sacred flame. Magic resistance. He's going to fail with a 15. Slightly better than the jackal. That's going to be seven damage total. And then I'm going to move to left corner. So I'm out of his sight. After the cron is the blind oracle. Bonus action hide. Stealth check says 20. 25 minimum. Can I see it from there? No, I actually have to move behind the simulacrum to see him. Let's move to behind the simulacrum, and then we'll take the shot from there. 26 to hit. 26 hits. God, math is hard tonight. 47 points of damage. 47 is reduced to 23 after the resistance. I would like to go one west. After the blind door calls the fear. Advance and open the door, and then into the cell, and attack. That's a 19 to hit. Yep, hits. 12 damage. 12 points is lethal. Skull drops to the ground dead. Hit points remaining. So mine is 118. He has 46. I have 155 out of 155. 150 out of 150. 206 out of 206. This is the first short rest. Anyone want to take any pre-rest actions? I wish to sprinkle holy water on all of the skulls so they stay destroyed. Sounds good. I would just like it noted that that jackal is just here now. Anyone have anything <laughs> they want to do after? I'm going to throw back a potion of frost giant strength. It's going to upgrade my strength to 23. Give me an extra plus one to hit on things and plus one damage. The first vampire has been slain. The adventurers are going to backtrack to the coffins they found before, stake this one in its coffin, and then move on to the next encounter in this dungeon. Two encounters down, four more to go before the long rest. Thank you for stopping by, and I hope you'll join us next week as the adventure continues. I'm Sarson Zero, and I will see you next time.